welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for um, another review for the Real Housewives of Orange County. And this is season 18. And this is episode three, Red Flags and Flag Football. And this was a cute little episode. It wasn't as exciting as the first two episodes, but I, I mean, they kind of started off with a bang, so I kind of got it. Um, but um, it was a good, it was a decent episode. It was a decent episode. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. And I think this review will be shorter. <laughs> I say that every time, but I promise you this review will be much shorter. Okay, so this starts off where we left off, where Gina stormed out of the um, coffee house after not letting Jen talk at all. And Jen's just kind of like, the hell? <laughs> and um, Gina immediately, when she gets in her car, she drives off and then she, well, she has a correct drive off. She um, first calls Emily and then Vince and then kind of drive and then drives off, you know. And Emily, of course, has her back. And that's that on that. While that's happening, we have um, Jen. She's still at the coffee shop and she calls Shannon. And Shannon is trying to be the voice of reason to Jen. Because I think two things can be true here. And by the way. Before we continue on this with this review, I need to say something because I had a comment in my last video that is gone, and the reason why it's gone is because I blocked them. Um, because I'm gonna—I don't know if I need to say this, but I'm gonna say this real quick. There will be no negative comments in my comment thing. That's just not gonna happen, okay? Um, <laughs> this channel. Although I do reviews for Real Housewife shows and things like that, and I might throw some shade here and there, it's for entertainment purposes when it comes to the housewives. I don't really feel that these people are horrible people or when I say certain things about certain people, I don't feel that way about them in real life because I don't know them in real life and neither do you. I'm going to say that <laughs> and make it very clear. Um... When you watch my videos, if you see the bottom, it says entertainment purposes because that's what it is for me. I do this for fun. I don't, I don't take any of it personal. After I get finished doing the review, I don't think about these people again until next week till I watch the show. Okay? <laughs> and you shouldn't either. <laughs> okay? Um, I had someone say something that was kind of odd and I'm like, hmm. We're not going to even address what they said, but just know that I take, I, 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 I'm not going to go back and forth with anyone in the comments. I'm an adult. I'm grown. You'll just be blocked. That's it. Okay. All right. Moving on. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so we had, um, Jen, Basically, Shannon is trying to be voice of reason, Jen, like, hey, Gina feels this way because of this. And yes, I understand where you're coming from, Jen. And I will say this and I'll, you know, I'll save it later. But I guess one thing I will say is this episode was a very interesting episode when it came to revelations when it comes to why you know, the views are the views. Like, Gina kind of goes a little bit more into detail. Because they do, this is not the last week we talk about this. <laughs> this is kind of what the main, this episode was mainly about was this, actually. Um, and side note, I just hope for the rest of the season, they don't continue to focus on Jen. I feel like at this point, now it's coming off as like you're picking on this lady. Um, and <laughs> although... I, two things can be true. She's very, oh, she's very naive and it drives me nuts. Um, but that's not cool to bully her either. And I said it before in my last review, although Gina might have a point on the things that she's saying, the way she delivered that was way out of turn. And she was doing too much. And I still stand by that. Um, but anyway... That's kind of what happens a little bit here at the beginning. Um, on to the next scene. So then the next scene we have um, 
we have Shannon and Tamara getting ready for um, Emily's flag football event because that's the event that she's put together. I think last week, so last week you saw that some of them are practicing for that and it's, that's happening today. And the dual thing is Tamara's getting ready and just being a hater and constantly talking about Shannon. Shannon's living in her head rent free while Shannon's just simply getting ready. <laughs> a little bit of it does have Shannon talk about Tamara and Grafet and her confessional about how Tamara thinks that Shan's a horrible person. But that was a confessional thing that was kind of after the fact. So I don't really know what that's about. Um, Cause you know, for those who don't know, when they do the confessionals, it's like after the season is wrapped and they're doing commentary basically. Whereas Tamara's just talking about Shannon like while she's getting ready. And I'm just kind of like, I will say this, and I think I said last last episode, um, yeah, last review, I'm pretty sure I said it. Tamara has no storyline. I mean, it's pretty obvious she has no storyline. So this is the reason why she is just picking, she's finding someone to pick on. And she decided this season is going to be Shannon. Um... I'm a little worried that she's going to try to pick on Jen again. But I think she's trying to hold off a little bit because of how much of a backlash she got last season for doing that. Because it really, the way Tamara plays, she looks like a bully and talks like a bully. She's kind of a bully. I, I, and for those who love Tamara, okay, congratulations. I already said in multiple, in like my first episode review and the second episode review, I am not a Tamara fan at all. I don't hate her because I don't know her, but I'm not a fan. I don't like how she acts on the show. Um, the self, the self righteous, but lack of self awareness of her own behavior. I, I'm not a fan. We'll just say that. Anyway. So then there, from there we have Emily and she arrives at her event. She's getting set up and one by one, the ladies are arriving. Um, we find out that Katie needs to be a figure skater. And side note, none of these girls know how to play football, really. <laughs> like, um, none of them really know the game of football, but that's not what this is for. Um, but we do end up finding out that the team captains are going to be Emily and Tamara. Basically, the two that are kind of the most athletic on this show, but none of them really know football. And they predicted it, and they were correct. Heather Dubrow is a referee, because she literally dressed like a referee. So she decided she was going to be a referee. And they decided, hey, that works. So they gave her two whistles, and she was using those whistles like it was her job to use those whistles. Which, I mean, I guess it kind of was for the time being. So, um, the ladies, so those two ladies, so basically Emily and Tamara, they pick their teams and they happen to pick the teams based upon who they get along with type, type thing for the most part. So you didn't have people on the same team that don't get along and which is great. We didn't want that. Um, and anyway, so which the whole purpose of this, by the way, I think Emily mentioned it last episode, but I'm not sure if I did. Emily decided to put this together to help those who don't get along address their issues. <laughs> um, I would think tackle football would have did it more, but also considering none of these ladies are athletic, that probably would have went over well. So flag football it is. <laughs> anyway. So, Jen is venting about the Gina situation with Team Tamara, which, side note, I don't think that's the best idea, Jen, for you to be talking about. I feel like Jen shouldn't be talking about anything personal to Tamara at all. And, or maybe in this case, this isn't really personal and this is for the show. And I don't know. I just don't trust Tamara. <laughs> That and, and considering what happened last season, I don't think she should either, but whatever. Um, and then so while this is happening, we have Shannon venting to Team M about Alexis and John, which is petty. And this is what Shannon was talking about. So 
apparently Alexis and um, John start going to Shannon's gym after they after Shannon broke up which after Shannon and John broke up. While Shannon was with John, he would never go to that gym. And now he's going to this gym. Just trying to force a storyline to try to get this lady back on the show. And John really wants to be on, on, on camera so bad. Like, just, ugh, gross. Anyway. So. But while this is happening um, on both sides, I, I forgot to mention when Jen's talking to all the ladies, Tamara included, mostly all the ladies are neutral when it comes to the situation between Jen and Gina, because kind of similar to like what I mentioned last week, they could kind of see both sides of it. Um, and I think I, my review was a little bit more on the Gina side last week, but that was a, a lot of it was me projecting because I can't really relate to the married side of it as much or really being kept. I've never had that situation. So for me, and, I've, and I, I think I prefaced it when I mentioned the review last week that it's hard for me to see, pardon me, it's kind of hard for me to see um, the perspective of being dependent because I just never have let myself be in that position all the way. Even when I was kind of in that position in a previous relationship, I was never always all the way in that position. And also, I don't have children. So I think there's a lot of moving pieces, and it wasn't a marriage. So it's hard for me as an individual to see Jen's side. But the other women, because this is a Real housewife show, all the other women have either been married before or are married, so or have went through a divorce before, so they can see, you know, Jen's side. So they're, they are doing a lot better being neutral than even I am. And I think when I, and, and, and um, if I had more of the experience, maybe I could see Jen's side more. And honestly, too, a little bit later on in this episode, not that much later on, but a little bit later on, I do understand Jen's point of view a little bit more. Um, I, no matter what Gina was doing too much, though, we'll say that. But I just, and... It does end up um, being resolved as some, some, one way or the other, but I'm skipping ahead a little bit there. But anyway, so it's tabled at that moment, and then they go on to play the flag football. And Charles a mess, but Emily's team won. And Emily's team was Emily, Jen, Gina, and Shannon were all on the team. And then they had a couple other pe other girls who were there that weren't part of the show. Um, but yeah, that was a team that won. Okay, so then shortly after the game is over with... Um, oh, I forgot to mention, because I skipped over a little bit. I went back to the Jen and um, Gina situation. While all this is happening, Shannon... Because Alexis is there too, by the way. I forgot to mention she was there. I, I kind of want to forget she was there because I just, oh my God. I The way that Alexis thinks that she is just eating this up this, this season, I think she thinks this is her way of getting back on the show and it's not the way. It ain't it. Like, she looks dumb and it's given single white female. I mean, I don't know how else to, to say or put it. And I'll talk about it a little bit more um, during the episode. Well, during this review, because more will come out. And you'll be like, okay, that is very single white female. Because, yeah. Anyway, so after the game is over with, because um, Alexa was on Tamara's team, of course. And um, she leaves, but then all the other ladies are still there talking. And Jen and Gina tried to talk again after the game. Gina is still doing the most, but she's not going as hard as she was at the coffee shop. And I think the only reason why she isn't going as hard as she was at the coffee shop is because other ladies were there to kind of make sure she don't do all that. 
Um, and so, but she still, she called, she called Jen a squatter. She, she, I'm just like, girl, now you're putting 20 on 10. <laughs> you're only a squatter if you stay after the eviction. That's not even a deposition. For her being a realtor, she's not even using the terms properly. And so everyone like had to like, kind of like take a step back and like, girl, 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 like Heather and everyone was like, that was out of pocket. She is not a squatter. Like, I love that everyone checked and was like, honey, she is not a squatter. That's not even what that is. Because it's not. A squatter is someone who legally is not, uh, legally should not be there, but is there. But their rights, but once you have been there for a little bit, you technically can squat. But legally, she was allowed to be there until the eviction date. So that would not make her a squatter. And we know she doesn't even live over there anymore. So she's therefore not a squatter. <laughs> anyway, so while and the ladies are all there and the ladies are actually doing a great job. I mean, all of them, they're minus Emily. Emily is just being annoying as hell and being like a, a cheerleader um, type. Um, and I love that Jen was like, Emily, what's your problem? Like she did straight up say that to Emily, like, what's your problem? Because really, <laughs> Emily ain't got nothing to do with it for her to be doing the most with that. And I love how the other ladies chimed in and was like, look, and, and Jen also did break it down. And I'm glad now she had the opportunity to talk because now I kind of relate a little bit more to Jen on this situation. But it's because we didn't know because Gina didn't even allow this lady to talk last time around, right? So Jen was like, look, my divorce is not final. Up until this day, he's always paid for my things. So why would I think all of a sudden things would be different? He always has. And they've been doing this divorce thing for three years. So two out of the three years, he's paying for everything. And the last year, he's not. How was I supposed to know he's going to all of a sudden not pay for something? I'm like, that's true. That's very true. And, but then what I think the point that even I have, Gina has, and everyone had, and if Gina would have led with kindness and stuff, she would have gotten there. And even Heather mentioned, it's like, well, we're worried that you're just going to put yourself back in a similar position because now you move, you move from over there and now you're with Ryan. And everyone asks, so if Ryan didn't pick up the pieces and, you know, take on the payment of your car and all that stuff, what would happen? She's like, I, myself and the kids, we would be homeless. And I'm like, okay. So... Everyone's reentering. She needs to get herself out of this. She cannot continue to rely on a man to take care of her. And I'm pretty sure Jen, you know, Jen's very aware of it, it sounds like now. And I think she has been before, but we also find out in the confessional, because one of the producers asked a very telling question, and that answered everything for me, and it just made me not be as harsh on her and honestly, if Gina was to go back, if Gina was to go back and watch a show, and I think she probably has, because I think they're cool now, um, I think she will feel extra bad. Um, during the cafe, and let me let me go back. Sorry, my nose is itching, so I had to like get off camera for a second. Um, so one of the producers in the in the in um, Jen's confessional asked, like, "Hey, have you ever had a credit card in your name?" And the answer is no. She's 46 years old and has never had a credit card in her name. So remember how I mentioned maybe she sheltered? It is that. She is financially sheltered. She has no idea. And that is scary. And if you look back at like, um, Really, if, you, if historically you look back, that's how a lot, of, a lot of women were like my um, 
mom's generation and before that. So baby boomers and before that's how it used to be. But it's like, that's crazy. Like, it's hard for me to fathom it because I just know I wasn't raised that way. And, um, yeah, that's just, I put it in perspective. Cause we're about to, so Jen and I are similar age. We're of similar age. Um, she's a, she's a couple years older than me, but similar age, right? I had my first credit card when I was 18 like right when I was 18. And you're probably wondering, how did you already have a credit card? I had my first cell phone when I was 18. You're probably asking, how did I have my first, both in my name, not my name and parents' name, my name and my name only. And the difference is I've been working since I was 16 years old. And I, I mean, I had moments in life where I lost my way when it came to saving. But when I put my mind to things, I actually am really good at saving money when I put my mind to it. And right now, I'm more on that side of the, side of the house where I'm a lot better at saving money. Um, but like, yeah. So that's also why looking back, <laughs> I feel, I kind of feel bad. I ain't going to hold you. I kind of feel bad about how, how I... I reviewed things last week because I definitely was projecting um, because I just can't imagine not knowing any of that. And this is coming from, I'm a black woman in the United States of these Americas, you know, and my parents' generation didn't know. A lot of this stuff I learned the hard way. I didn't talk to my parents about financial wellness or anything like that. I messed up my own credit on my own and figured it out myself, you know? I established my own credit myself. So I'm coming from the complete opposite side of things, so I'm not understanding this at all, how she just is like, she was just able to let someone else do that for her, and that wasn't mom or dad. I'm <laughs> just kind of like, whoa. But, um... So yeah, that puts a lot that puts into perspective where Jen's coming from. She seriously did not know. And she's learning the hard way now. And hopefully these ladies will actually act as a sisterhood. I know this show can be toxic, or whatever, but in this moment when they're all talking this through and Gina finally relaxed on it all. And Gina saw her side of it for the first time. She was like, everyone, everyone was like, wow. And felt for her. Because, you know, a couple of these ladies have been divorced before. So they understand. Like, even Tamara. Tamara, I don't like her. Don't get it twisted. I don't trust her ever. But she was saying some sound advice. I think she put the show on the side for a second and actually was like, hey, I get it. You know, divorces are hard. And then Gina let her guard down. She's like, you know what? I, myself, I feel like I was projecting on you a little bit because Travis is moving out. And it kind of made sense to me. I was like, oh, so you're seeing Jen as Travis. You really want to say all these things to Travis, but you're saying it to Jen instead. That's, how, that's what I took from it. Because for those who don't know... Gina has a similar situation where she's been broke on the show for a long time. She was struggle busting it up. And she took she took a little bit more of my approach when her marriage ended and just downsized and then you know rebuild on her own. Whereas Jen is not doing that, but she doesn't she doesn't know what to do, you know? Um because there's the financial literacy isn't all isn't there. And I'm going to hold you. I kind of feel a way about her parents now, Jen's parents. Because um, it seems like they bail her out, but they haven't taught her any financial literacy skills. And that's scary. I would never want that. And I'm glad my parents are not that type that do that. Um, I have some friends whose parents are like that, and they're not helping. They're enabling the problem. And I, I think every parent 
parents differently, so you don't know that you're not helping until it's mentioned, but I mean, you don't know what you don't know. That's pretty much what it all boils down to. But um, back to Gina, I think Gina is literally seeing it for what it is. Gina finally did, you know, open up to Lay. She's like, I'm finally, you know, I'm building up my money. I'm building up my finances. And she said it without saying it. Travis is not there with her on it. Travis is still here. Now, the reasoning behind why she's saying it has to do with, you know, Travis's ex-wife making it hard and all that. So, but, is it all that? I, I'm giving this look because I've alluded to this in multiple, I've alluded to this in multiple episodes. And this is, and this might be also a gender thing. Um, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I think gender roles a lot of times, especially gender roles in these United States and these Americas, um, it's never a good feeling when, if you're in a man and woman relationship or whoever is a masculine presenting person versus a feminine presenting person in the relationship and you're being the man of the house and the woman of the house. And as in like Gina being the breadwinner, okay? And let's be real. Even when Gina was struggling, Gina had a housewife check. It wasn't, now, I mean, the housewives don't be making the monies like they used to make, but she had something. We never knew what Travis did for a living. And Travis has, mul and Travis has multiple kids. We never heard about his job or anything like that. And I think I've said it before, I feel like this is finally the time where Gina's getting sick of it. And so because she's sick of it, she's projecting it on anything or anyone that comes off to her phony. Which is not right. And I'm not calling Jen a bum. Let's, let's be clear. I'm not calling her a bum. But I think anyone that comes off is just like, you know, that kind of energy, she's going off on them. And I also think she's jealous. And I think she kind of even said it when she, when she was venting about it, that Jen has someone to fall back on. Gina didn't. Gina had more of the hustle, you need an ish or get off the pot. And Jen... Even though her life's a hot mess right now, you know, we have our views about Ryan over here. We, we all do. I think his name's Ryan. I think I've been calling him Andy, but it's Ryan. Ryan. We all have our views about Ryan, but it's like, he's, he stepped up. I mean, on paper, it looked like he stepped up. And it seemed, I mean, she's staying at his house right now, so he stepped up and so are the kids. She's not homeless. So she still gets to live in the big house. And then if Ryan didn't exist, we see her parents would have stepped in. Gina doesn't see, it doesn't seem, seem like Gina has that. And that's the difference. Um, and I think Gina is resentful of that. And I think she kind of said it without saying it. And I'm, I'm actually... I ain't gonna hold you. This is growth on Gina's part because Gina apologized too. She apologized. She kind of said all that without saying it. And hopefully they don't have any more problems for the rest of the season. If anything, I hope that they can lean on each other for support because they're going through different phases of a similar situation. You know what I mean? Like Gina's, even though Gina's divorce is over with because she's with a partner whose divorce still isn't over with, she's still kind of in that. And Gina's divorce hasn't started yet. Not Gina, but um, 
Jen's divorce hasn't started yet, so she's just stuck in limbo. So hopefully, and not just them two, hopefully all the ladies can support each other through all this and they leave Jen alone for a little bit. But I do like also at the same time, they all did talk to Jen about how she needs to be better when it comes to her financial literacy. And hopefully they will help teach her to get on her own feet and, you know, handle it. Because even Tamara when, was kind of venting about how, like, she is a gym. And this is actually one of the reasons why I never opened a gym. Because I was thinking about opening a gym. For those who know and know about how I've been for years, that was one of my dreams was to open my own gym. Gyms don't make money. Gyms do not make money. Especially since that has been an overly saturated field for decades now. I would say if you would have been earlier on earlier on in opening a gym and then got out at a decent time it, when it comes to that, yes, that makes money. But opening your own gym is not, that's a passion project. That's not going to, it doesn't, it's one of those businesses, you don't do that. You don't open one of those things to make money. Um, it has to be extremely niche in order for it to even consider making money, but a lot of the niche ideas have already been taken. So that's one of the main reasons why I never did open a gym. Cause I thought about it. I, I um, used to be a certified personal trainer. Uh, I have a degree in accounting and degree in business management. And that was literally what I was going to do. That was what I was thinking about doing, opening my own gym. And then I realized that doesn't even make any sense. And I was seeing that gyms were closing left and right. And this is pre, when I made the decision not to open a gym, I will say this was back in like 20, 2011, 2010, 2011, I realized that was not the move because it's not, that's not business that's easy to do. That's, that's a business you do passion first, and then if the money comes along, you, you're you lucky. And Tamara is a good person to say that, because remember, Tamara and her husband, Eddie, had a gym. And they had to close it, because they, they were not making any money anymore. So, if anyone knew, knows this, it is Tamara and Eddie. And Tamara and Eddie didn't have any partners, it was just them two that owned the gym. Whereas... Jen has her own yoga studio, but she has partners and they're not making any money. Um, Jen mentioned in her professional, she does not have enough money to even pay herself. Being a business owner is not, you, that's not, for those who are not aware, that's just not the feel, you, you're not going to make the money quickly. That is a slow burn. And when I say burn, that could be a positive burn or a negative burn. It really just depends. And she opened this gym. She opened her yoga studio, I think, that year that she started the show. So last year or year before that. So she's still in that point where she's not going to make money yet. And I don't think she knew that. It sounds like from what the way she's even talking, she didn't even know that she's not going to make any money. You don't so, but anyway, the point is things did get resolved here, which we love that on Housewife shows when things get resolved. Jen, um... Gina cried. She apologized. She opened up about the Travis situation. And that's where we came um, out with that. But then at the end... <sighs> so Gina does have her so sly comments here and there in the confessionals. I'm not even as annoyed by it. I'm kind of like, whatever. But why does Emily have all this energy for her? Emily is still doing these sly comments because in, at the end of this scene... She gives out these trophies for like most improved player. She tried. And then after she did the, she gave the, she tried to Jen. She shades the living daylight side of Jen as if this affects her at all. And it's like, Emily, go get a storyline and leave Jen alone. I, I just, <laughs> and then as I said that, <laughs> next scene, Emily has a solo scene. I'm like, mm-hmm. Producers, y'all knew I was about to get on. I was about to get on Emily. 
I'm still going to get on her a little bit because, yes, although she does have things going on, she ain't really got nothing going on. She still don't really have a storyline. I feel like she's just fishing for things to do. Emily could have seriously been a friend of this season. I I'm going to double, triple down on that. She could be a friend of. But anyway, so... Um, Emily goes to, um, is doing a photo shoot, a burlesque photo shoot, um, for Shane, her husband, and Shannon goes with her for support. It was cute. It was a cute scene. Um, Emily opens up about her body image, um, and how she's feeling about this weight loss situation, which we kind of already knew she had body issue and like body image issues, but it sounds like it's gotten worse because she's lost the weight. And... I think I've said this before, for those who are not aware, um, for those who don't know, I actually used to be a really, really big girl. I mean, now I'm, I'm thickish, um, but I'm not as big as I used to be. I actually used to be, like, not in shape and whatnot before I became a runner and all that stuff. And, um, what I will say about that is when I first became a runner, I lost a lot of weight very quickly. Um, because mind you, this was also my twenties. So like things fall off when you're, you know, things fall off when you're in your twenties. It's just like, <laughs> takes nothing. And, um, I also became kind of competitive as a runner. So the weight was, e it was easy for the weight to stay off. But the reason why I say all that is although you lose a weight physically, it takes a while for your bot, your brain to register your weight loss. Hence how body dysmorphia happens and is a thing. And even to, and to this day, I kind of, I suffer from body dysmorphia issues to this day. I'm very aware of it. Like I yo-yo, I go up and down. I'm not as hard on myself as I used to be. I used to be really hard on myself. I actually had some issues for a while when it came to all that, but it's gotten resolved. Um, well, resolved itch like again it's one of those things once it happens you just have to constantly just try to be aware of it depending on how severe it gets in my case it never got too severe but it, it's just something I always pay attention to and Shannon was a good support in this scene for Emily because you know Shannon has been up and down you know when it comes to her weight on the show like like most people most women especially um because of the variables of childbirth and all the other stuff, there's a lot that can lead to weight loss and weight gain. A little bit more with women than with men. But, you know, it's a thing. And um, so Shannon, you know, her was, was being a good support. And hopefully, even though I was just being hard on Emily about having a storyline, story I want her to go, I want her to really... Uh, tackle I want her to tackle this issue if she does a good job of tackling this issue not only for herself but for us viewers I think that would change my mind when it comes to a lot of things when it comes to Emily because to do all that to lose a weight to be a bigger girl and also then be on tv that's a whole nother thing I have my own issues without being on tv now do that and be on tv too that's a whole nother thing and to lose the weight, to always be considered the big girl. And then she also even talked a little bit about being taller. That makes things awkward too. And I was like that too. I've always been a tall girl. Um, I was six foot about time I was like, I think freshman or sophomore in high school is already six foot. So even if I wouldn't have been heavy, which I was already, what it weighs on what if I step on the scale versus someone who's like me, you know, more of like a five six, which is still tall, five let's go five five, a five five, five four girl. Yeah, the, the scale's gonna be a lot different. <laughs> and when you're younger, it it's a lot, it could be a lot, and it can have some lasting impressions on you. So Hopefully, she talks a little bit more about it. She does go a little bit more about it this episode, but I want her to really tackle it 
and hopefully she gets something out of it this season. And then I'll be honest after this, my it can be her last season because she doesn't really have anything else going on. And she hasn't for a while. She's been coasting. <laughs> we know Emily's been coasting for quite a few seasons. So there's that. And that's outside her being mean. I know shes they're trying to make her the com comedic relief. <sighs> they got eight cast members. They don't need all eight of them. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I kind of already tackled what was happening here. Um, oh, also in this scene... Um, because this is a dual scene, by the way. So in this same scene, though, Shannon's talking to um, Emily about the aftermath of the gym situation. So you remember during the flag football, it came out that um, Alexis and John are going to Shannon's gym. Well, Shannon talked to her trainer again over the phone after that event. And <laughs> the trainer confronted John and um, Alexis and basically kicked them out. So now they're no longer allowed in that gym. Well, apparently, according to Shannon, John went off. Shannon's lying a little bit because Shannon, girl, girl. There was no way that Alexis was talking about their sex life out loud to the trainer. But maybe she was because I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe Shannon ain't lying. But one of them is lying. <laughs> okay. One of them ain't telling the truth. Or there might be a little falsies on both sides. But um, apparently, um, according to Shannon... Alexis tries to say she's a good Christian girl. And then the trainer is like, well, I wouldn't know about your sex life if you were a good Christian girl. And then John flew off the handle, started going off on the trainer, and then stormed off. And now he no longer goes to the, they don't go to that gym anymore. But dual scene, we have Jen, Tamara, and Alexis all walking the dogs together. And why does Alexis have a dog that looks just like Shannon's dog now? And she just adopted this dog. And both Tamara and Jen in their confessionals like, it's giving single white female. What is happening? <laughs> so, yeah, Alexis, side note. I think you think you're eating up as like, Everyone's looking at you like you're crazy because you do look crazy. I don't know why she thinks this is not wild. But anyway, so they are walking the dog. And according to Alexis, Alexis thinks there's no way the trainer would have known about all that if it wasn't for Shannon telling the trainer. And the thing is, if Shannon told the trainer, it's her trainer. If she didn't tell the trainer, whatever. Either way... The other part about it when it comes to John storming out of there and this, that, and this, and uh, um, yeah. But this is my only thing that I've been wanting to, and, and the other lady said it too earlier on the football scene, why do you insist on going to the gym that she was going to anyway? It's like, I don't, Alexis is just really dumb. I don't understand why she thinks any of this would make any sense or would work at all. It's not salacious. It's, it's, we're, we're not saying, get it, sis. No, it's just not. I hate to say this. I think I believe Shannon. The more and more we talk this through, because we had talked this through as a family. It was like, I don't know if, I don't know if I believe her or not, but we had talked this through as a family. Now that we talk it through, no, I believe Shannon. I believe Shannon. Because I think So the next thing after that, we have like Housewives Montage. We have Heather and Terry, um, her husband, the, the DeBros, FaceTiming each other. Shannon basically almost sets herself on fire, lighting up a um lighting up her fireplace, her gas fireplace, because apparently the I guess the gas clicker for a gas fireplace doesn't work. That would be a nightmare because I also have a gas fireplace. And I, uh, mm -mm. if that was, if the clicker thing was to stop working, I would never use that fireplace ever again. Um, but yeah. 
similar thing. Um, and then Jen and Andy, they're PDAing in their in his pool. Not Andy. Ryan, I keep call so previous videos, I think I'm pretty sure I call him Andy is Ryan. Sorry. Um, anyway, so then next thing. We have Katie meeting up with Gina and Sutton. For those who don't know who Sun is, Sun's from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Um, so we're having a little bit of a housewife crossover right now. And basically, we find out how Sutton met um <clears throat> met Katie. And for those who don't know, both of them are Georgia girls. Uh Whisper says hi. Um, <laughs> not often you see my cat here, huh? But anyway, there's Whisper. Uh, okay. So, um, basically, Sun met Katie through golf. Um, for those who are not aware, though, both Sun and Katie are Georgia girls. Um, Katie's from Atlanta, and Sun is from Augusta, Georgia. And I know a lot of y'all who watch Real Housewives wouldn't know this. I only know this because my ex was an avid golfer. Um, one of my exes was an avid golfer. Um, <clears throat> Augusta, Georgia is known for one of the bigger golf tournaments. Um, one of the majors that they have is called the Masters. Yeah, I know the name isn't. I, I never liked the name either for obvious reasons. But anyway, that's what it's called. And... Um, that's one of the major golf um, majors that they have, um, and it's in Augusta, Georgia every year. It's always in Augusta, Georgia, and that's how they met. Anyway, so we basically get to know, um, so basically, Sun's getting the scoop of how does, um, how does Katie feel about um, the girls so far, and then it comes up about Heather, and... Katie doesn't really, Katie ain't really feeling Heather. Katie feels that Heather has two sides to her. And Sun's wanting her like, oh, that's not the person you want to be going against. Because Sun's really good friends with Heather, um, actually. And Gina's even like, mm, I, don't, I don't think that's the person you should be going against. And, but... Basically, it seems like the reason why Katie isn't, like, feeling Heather, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts, but to me, it's a little nitpicky. One was a party where, like, she says hi, like, so she's talking. Um, so Katie was at Sun's Christmas party, so was Heather. And um, Heather was like, hey, and then just kept it pushing, just did like this. And according to Katie, she did like this. But I guess, and this is maybe me seeing, just trying to see what it is. If I don't know you, I'm not going to necessarily talk to you. So Katie's kind of feeling a way, though, that like Heather, Heather's being nice to her now. But according to Heather, like when we see that first episode, According to Heather, that um, New Year's party was the first time she's ever met her. But according to Katie, Katie's been around. But I don't know. That's a little high schooling and then semantic e to me. Unless I shook your hand, say hi, and nice to meet you, I'm not going to feel any way about how you act and stuff. But that's just me. So we'll see what happens here. But it looks like preview next episode, they're going to possibly, we're going to, they might get into it. But anyway, so then, um, got two more scenes and that's the show. So the, the next short scene, Emily's talking to Shane about his health. Emily is on the extreme version of losing weight. She kind of reminds me how I was. Because I think this is probably the smallest Emily has been in a while. Um, it seems like. Probably post kids or whatever. And... I get this because I was like this when I first lost all my weight after becoming a runner and start when I started running marathons and all that. 
and um, while I was winning my age groups, I was I got really small. Like I got a little too small for me looking back now. Um, I would never want to get that small again. But I got obsessed. And it's it, again, it's the body dysmorphia. Just it, it kicks in. Similar issue of how you, you know, get it, how you lose it. It's all a chemical imbalance. It's all part of the same kind of toxic cycle, you know. Um Mine, though, in my case, was not about vanity, though. Mine was all about running faster. But the reason don't matter. The results are still, the results is what the problem is. You know what I mean? Where you're just, it's obsessing. And it sounds like the way she's describing things, I hope she's gotten a handle on it. But what she's saying, she's exercising every day. She's not giving herself a rest day. She's being herself up. And I don't want to put this on her jacket. Um, but I will just say this for me. As someone who has had issues, um, this can easily be one of those things that creep into not good. Um, when I was... At that point, I definitely was developing a little bit of exercise bulimia. And from the way she's describing things, not to put that label on her jacket, it, it's sounding similar to what that could lead to if she's not careful, if that's not what she's describing. Because I don't want to say that's what it is, because again, this is according to what she's saying on the TV and we don't play with people's health around here, but I think she needs to be careful um, because all things can be unhealthy, even things that are healthy, especially when you overdo it. Remember that, and that's a word. Anyway, last but not least, the final scene is Travis is moving out of Gina's place. And... This is confusing, and Tamara kind of said in her confessional earlier on when um, Gina was talking about this situation to the girls, um, him moving out with them not breaking up, it's weird, and it doesn't make sense, because it is weird and doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know, one thing about um, Tamara, I don't love her. But, you know, you could be right. You know, when you're right, you're right. And in this case, I don't see this working out. You know, and, and you know, Tamara mentioned, like, they've been together for four years and there's been no movement. Yeah. And the reason why I say yeah is because, you know, I've been in a similar situation. <laughs> Y'all are going to get sick of me for making it, like, bringing it back. But, I mean, I just lived a lot of lives. But, <laughs> um, yeah, similar, you know, that that's not a good sign. We'll just say that. I'm not even going to bring it back to me because, for one, like, we, we're going to wrap this up. But it, it's, it's not a good sign. It's not a good sign. And I think we could all tell that's not a good sign. And... I mean, it's it's pretty easy to see that Gina has outgrown him. And I think she needs to move on to bigger and better things. And she even said herself in the confessional, she chose herself and her kids and not the whole family. And when you're growing, you can't always bring everybody with you. And I, ha I just actually did a video just a little bit ago about how... That's why life is a series of moments sometimes and moments pass. And, and that sometimes includes people. Because you can't take everybody with you. That's just a word. Um, anyway, that does conclude the video for today. Um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye!